All right, physics classes. Um, I'm going to show you in this video how to enter data into Logger Pro and produce the best fit line. All right. So open up Logger Pro. This is a little bit older version than the one I'm instructing you to install. Um, but I doubt the new version looks much different. So this is what it looks like. It's our graph area. This is our data set area. Um, these are different graphing tools. All right. And we'll go through this. Um, Logger Pro can do lots of stuff. The three main things are just raw data analysis, which what is what we're doing here. Video analysis, which is my other video. And then also, um, it can actually input data from sensors, which are really cool. Um, automate some of the, it automates some of the data collection. So, first thing we're going to do here is uh, set up our two columns here. Now, X axis corresponds to the horizontal axis, the X, X axis. That is often time in physics, right? Which it was for the first lab here. Time. Now, there are uh, some things to note here. Name. This is the long name. This will be the name on the axes, um, on the title, that sort of thing. Short name is the variable that we use for whatever uh, thing we measured. So variable for t is, variable for time is lowercase t. The units are seconds, but we'll use an s. Now, there are various Greek letters, degrees, subscripts, superscripts that you can put in here. We'll do that later, later on. And it's, we don't do anything else here. It's numeric, hit done. Um, the course, the vertical axis will do position. All right, now, in our first lab, um, we actually had position as the independent variable, meaning the thing we controlled. And we recorded, measured the time, and that was the dependent variable. Now, I understand the rules typically are that you put the, um, dependent variable on the y-axis and independent variable on the x-axis, which means we should flip this technically. But we're not going to do that. Often in physics, I'll tell you which data to put on which axis because, um, you know, we want the, gra the lines, the functions that describe the lines, the equation of the lines to come out a certain way in the end. All right. So, in this case, position is going to be the y variable, the short name for that. Unfortunately, we use a lowercase x. Now, there's some thought that maybe that should be a lowercase r, um, kind of be a generic uh, position variable, but we're going to use x because that's kind of how what most physics textbooks do. Now, the unfortunate thing there is that the variable for the um, quantity on the y axis is an X, and that causes confusion. But just remember, this X means position. Units for a position are meters, all right? Done. It's very important that you take that step to name these columns right, and it's gonna make your life at the end of the lab a lot easier. Now, the data, we're gonna input the data. I only have a few minutes here. I wanna get this done before kids get out of lunch. Now, I scanned the data and I uploaded it all right, so I'm going to pick, oh, uh, I guess from today, I'll do today's lab group. I'm going to pick the data that I had generated. So 1.35, and now you just enter it. I hit the down arrow to go down a cell. 2.77, uh, 3.96, 5.31. Just make sure you double check what you're doing. 6.20, oh, 7.68. Oh. Missed it. Um, I can't tell you the number of times people miss a decimal place, and their graph looks wacky, and then they freak out, don't know what went wrong. Oops, I just hit enter. When you hit enter, it brings you to the left. So I use the down arrow, it brings you to the cell below it. All right, so those were our times for positions of one, two, three. The day before, we had gone outside and we did intervals of two meters. So 
be careful there. We had to stay inside today because it was a little cold, and a good portion of the class did not want to go outside, which is not uh, something I would hold against anybody. All right, so nine meters. And look, it generated a graph. Cool. As I was going, you probably noticed that building up. I was just too busy looking at my phone and this to, to see it. Cool. Great. Awesome. Hmm. Now what? Well, we want to get a fit line. We want to get the equation of this graph, okay? Fit line. Linear fit. Right here. Um, as long as you haven't clicked anywhere in the graph area, and you just hit linear fit, it'll put a fit line on it. X equals MT plus B. I thought that was supposed to be Y equals MX plus B. Well, what this does is for the X and Y variables, it puts in whatever short name you assigned it back in the beginning. So the short name for position we said was X. So position equals the slope of the line times time plus wherever, wherever it started, plus the Y intercept. Now, you see I have a y-intercept here. I didn't put zero, zero in. Um, I didn't do that because we really never do that, unless it's like no weight and no force, but typically we don't put a zero in there. Um, we let the y-intercept tell us whether or not we have some error, and it looks like we did. It looks like I probably uh, messed up the initial start time, right? It looks like um, the whole thing should be shifted a little bit to the left, which seems to indicate that I probably started the time a little bit late, right, on that first cone for this person. Um, or maybe early. Uh, yeah, I guess early because it's like time was running and then they started. Okay. Um, and that's it. And I'll show you how to record this. When we get in class, the bell's going to ring here. We'll talk a little bit more about how we interpret this screen here. Now, I would probably print this like I showed in the other video file. First, I would do page setup, make sure it's on landscape. And then I would print it. File print. Print footer. This is useful. If you're ever printing out, like in a class, and everybody's printing out at once, it's useful to have... Um, your names in there so when you grab it out of the printer you know whose is who so you put your names in there hit okay and it would print it i'm not going to print it right now i don't need it but um when we're looking for linear uh relationships we want correlations of three nines and better this person was it they did a great job they walked at a very constant velocity or speed in this case well really it's either in this case We'll talk a little bit more about the slope means. It turns out we already know this, but the slope of position versus time is velocity. So this walker's velocity was 0 0.8088 or 81. Really, two sig figs is all about we ever use in this course. So about 0 0.81 meters per second. Harmon's timing error caused us to have a y-intercept. So we'll talk a little bit more about how we do this equation uh, in class. And uh, when we discuss the the lab, all right, and that's it. Bell ring, good to go. Have a good one.